Welcome to the Since You Asked Show. My name is David Stewart. I am the founder of Ageist Magazine. Hi, my name is Susan Heady. I'm a 66-year-old competitive bodybuilder and stand-up comic. Hi, my name is Rob Angel. I'm the creator of Pictionary, Traveler, and Explorer. And since you asked, we're going to answer your questions. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Looking forward to some awesome advice today. Maybe I'll learn how to be a better human or not. Who knows? <laughs> Susan, tell me about the purple. You, you got these purple glasses. There's all this color going on on the screen here. The purple glasses. You've got the fuchsia top. You've got the, what color is the wall? Is that the sort of a light oh, teal? Oh, goodness. It's this beautiful, yeah, kind of teal. I just did this. My son moved out, so I re- decorated and I didn't think I was going to like it, but I do. I can't remember the name though. Sorry. And yes, Super color classic. is a big deal. Yeah. Um, with, you can tell with me as well. <laughs> Rob, Rob is a internationally known uh, interior decorator and you can see the, uh, the evidence of his work in the background there. Great job, Rob. Thank you, David. You know, I, I take a lot of time in my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this week, um, what we've got, we've got a question from April and April says, I'm a recent grandmother and I want to be involved, but wondering how much is too much. I don't want to overstep during my son and daughter-in-law's first time having a baby, but also want to play an active role. Hmm. What do you guys think? Oh, I'm taking this one. Oh Lord. <laughs> I am a grandmother of soon to be seven. And Miss April, let me just give you some advice. Don't do anything unless you are asked to do it. Because I often say that when you get to be a grandparenting, you know, it's almost as if you had three companies. Like in my case, I had three kids. And you develop these companies and were super successful. But by the time you get to be a grandparent, you were off the board. They fired you. They gave you your pink slip and nobody's asking your opinion. So if you want to protect yourself, let me just say, if they need something, if they come to you and you can do it, but girlfriend, do not devote your life. You know, even though as much as you'll love these grandkids, it can be very, very harmful to your psyche because here's the deal about being a grandparent. It's no longer your relationship with the child. For instance, in my case, it's my daughters who had the babies. Now it's your relationship with your daughter and her relationship with her husband. And you didn't raise him. So his take on kids and everything else creates a dynamic that can be really, quite frankly, painful. So even very difficult to do, unless they ask for your opinion, love on those babies, Buy them things, but don't give <laughs> unsolicited advice. Wow, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some stuff up now because I agree with everything you said. This is one of those ones uh, that that we're not gonna fight. We'll just come up with witty things to say. I'm not a grandparent, but I'm really looking forward to being one. Uh, but I've had a uh, a mother-in-law, and I think your job, April, is like a buddy of mine. He's a drummer and he's been on multiple 500 albums and he's a great drummer. You can be a great grandmother, but he says there's a lot of great drummers. His job is to get invited back. Your job is to get invited back. If you start exactly what Susan said, pushing your nose where it doesn't belong, doing things that are going to piss everybody off, you know, you're not going to get invited back. That's painful. So you want to do that. And, and there is such a fine line between doting grandmother and just a pain in the ass. Speaking of asses, Susan, how are you? Uh, yes, <laughs> my ass is just great. And I okay. am no longer a pain in the ass, but I learned that a bit the hard way. And I, I think, you know, I wasn't used to not dealing with my daughter on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I mean, we talk every day, but then all of a sudden when you've got a son-in-law that, like I said, you didn't 
raised culturally, they're not the same way. Perhaps they don't have the same mindset for your kids. And all of a sudden you start interjecting what your thoughts are, what you and your daughter think. It just, I used to go in and do everything. You know, I'd clean, I'd cook, I'd just yeah. create a side room. And nobody gave a shit. The only people who care are those babies. So love, <laughs> love, yeah. love on them. They'll always know that you love them, but just keep your mouth closed. And that's such a hard lesson yeah. to learn, but it's so important to protect yourself. Cause if not, you know, there are so many stories and it's not talked about a lot about grandparents being sort of not invited back. And can you imagine being told you can't see your grandbabies? So they hold up that grandbaby card and it's really yeah. something that needs to be talked about a bit more um, because it can be extremely painful. Yeah, and, and something you said about your, your son and your daughter, they're kind of a team now. And if you try to go with your son or your daughter and tell them, you know, and ask, not even tell them, just ask them, you know, I'd like to see the baby more. I'd like to do this. Y you better go through the, the mother. As men and the new father, we're clueless. We're absolutely clueless. We're good dads and all these things. But if you don't contact or go to us both, we're gonna we're gonna acquiesce to the wife, to our wives, excuse me. She's the mother, we think, we think she's smart enough. So yeah, don't play one against the other or you're sunk. <laughs> My ex-wife and I, we we decided finally after a year to let the mom her mom, take care of our daughter. Guess what she did? Cut her hair. She was what? Yeah. Yeah. She was one years old and she had this big curl. It was right here. And we get back home and she has this little plastic bag. Look what I did. Look what I saved for you. She was not invited back for six months. <laughs> that was, I, I've never, I love her to death, by the way, just so you know, full disclosure. I love my ex-wife's mom, but, oh man, that was super awkward, super uncomfortable. Don't do stuff to your babies, your grandchildren. I, I really think there should be a grandparenting manual. I mean, I, I do, because again, it's yeah. one of those things that you get to it and that chapter was torn out, you know, in the handbook of life. And then you get yeah. there and you realize you're doing shit that you know, is just going to be not catastrophic for them because they can easily yeah, say, yeah. you're not coming back for six weeks. Uh, you're not yeah. coming back for a month. And that's really, really painful. So the other yeah. thing is get a goddamn life. You know what I mean? <laughs> just because you have grandkids doesn't mean that now your world has to be focused around that. So, so you don't have to move near your grandkids? I would not recommend it. And here's the case, because if something like that happens now, you've given up everything. You live next door to them and they tell you, you can't come over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Susan, we've done a few questions, answered a few uh, letters. You're really worked up over this one. This, I can tell your energy. I can tell you really, you're feeling really strongly about this. So if anybody's listening, I would pay attention. <laughs> So what Susan's saying, because if not, she'll knock on your door. I'd be very careful right now. I love you, Rob. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, it was wonderful. We'll, um, we'll see you next week. Take care. Take care.